Today's video is a little bit different. It's about jealousy because I am feeling jealous. Now I may look like I'm happy but I'm uncomfortable as hell. So I'm going to go into it and explain and give you the context of my situation first and then I'm going to explain to you where I'm at and the learning that I've had from this scenario. It's rather awkward. So me volunteering myself because it felt right to work in the space of awkwardness and boundaries was always going to bring around scenarios in my life that were highly awkward and that lacked boundaries and therefore needed adjusting in some way. So I kind of called this one on. So I have no one to blame other than myself. But I'm currently connecting with a guy and I call it connecting. All of my friends are understanding of this. For me, relationships are sacred. When you go into a relationship, there's longevity, there's a deeper commitment, there's more of a, uh, a kind of goal, couple goal of what you want to achieve together and where you want to be together. And having that beautiful outlined future in some way is what I want to commit to in the future is, is a relationship. It's a very strong relationship. And there are other things in the world, such as um, situationships, which are scenarios that aren't yet relationships and there's just a situation going on between you. And then the connections. And connections are where that you're a little bit more respectful than a situationship. There isn't really problems, it's just that you're connecting in a way that is deeper, more heartfelt, more grounded, more centred, more respectful. That is what I'm currently in. I'm in something with somebody um, and I've been liking it because it's been showing me who I am and where I'm at. I've not been able to hide in this one. <laughs> Usually I can hide under, you know, and just say, no, 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 it's not, it's not the thing. It's not my guy. And when I haven't really, you know, cause I haven't really felt that that person is my guy. Um, and this one is more of a question of, it's not that they're not my guy. It's just that I like them more than I thought I would. So I don't know what that means, but I'm very well aware that, um, you know, I've been single for a long time, 12 years to be precise, or just over, oh shit, actually it'll be 13 years in January, oh, February, um, that's a long time to be on my own, so I can only learn about myself in relationship when I'm actually in one, or in a connection when I'm actually in one, so the opportunities of me working through other stuff when I'm on my own isn't always there, I still try and dig deep and make sure I'm coming from a good space, but you have to have someone else to reflect back to you to help you see your own bullshit, yeah? And if you're single, that's not always possible. So, I've been feeling jealous. And the reason I've been feeling jealous is because the person that I'm in my connection with has another interest um, of someone. Now, the, the key factor here is, let's be honest, in the past, Whatever guys I've dated, like properly, had a relationship with, have cheated on me. And any other guys I've connected with or like been in some kind of situation with, whenever they finish with me, they go in with somebody. And that person is always short. She's always got brown hair. It's the exact opposite of me. So in the past, I've had this vendetta against short people with brown hair, which is half the population, which is totally ridiculous. But that's where my ego took me. I hated the opposition, as I called it. Um, and then I grew up and realised that I was just fucking stupid and it wasn't going to serve me. So I really needed to look at it and go, no, this is I'm, I'm never going to be short with brown hair, am I? It's just never going to happen. So I can change my perspective on that and realise that it's not necessarily that that's, you know, I have to hate every short haired, you know, short, sorry, brown haired person. But certain people have preferences and I wasn't the preference. I was the flavour, you know, the blonde. Um, but they go for girls with brown hair after me. And then I realised there's nothing I can do about that to get over it. So I did. But this current situation that I'm in right now, the other person in this, my connections relationship, with the, in, in his life, looks very much like me. A little bit older. Lives on the opposite side of the world. Can't quite get to her right now. Um, but has a very deep, fond, loving connection. And... Um, I'm noticing that and I was in a position the other day where I noticed it even more and I noticed there was a bit of a pining and a bit of a oh, and I thought oh wow 
I'm connecting with a guy that has a bit of heart fluff for someone else and that makes me feel quite uncomfortable because I'm like, oh, spare part in your living room over here, feeling awkward. And there was no reassurance around that. There was no conversation that was like, are you okay? You're all right? It was just more like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got, really, I've got a lot of love for her. When I observed it, I was like, ouch. So uh, th- it's been very blatant. And when I've been in this connection with this person, they've also been very, you know, uh, jabbed at me a couple of times about how it's not going to be a long-term thing or they're just trying to reframe it to make sure I know that we're definitely not in a relationship. To which I've not begged for or asked for I've just keep receiving these jabs and that made me realize that this person's like feeling a bit of internal pressure it's not necessarily them being horrible but I'm not clinging on for a relationship I just am now aware of how much this person feels uncomfortable about having one and um even with all that said and knowing that really I'm probably teetering in waters that aren't mine and I should be moving on this morning I woke up and I thought hmm I need to get out of this situation because it feels uncomfortable. So then I was going to make the call and then I was like, hold a minute, why am I doing this? What I realised was at that moment, that very moment when I felt jealous, instead of sitting with it and being like, why do you feel jealous now? Where's this coming from? What does it mean? What can you do about it? You know, what I wanted to do was end it slightly aggressively. I was a bit angry and I was like, ah, I want to give my pain that I'm currently feeling to him. (laughs) I want to give how I feel right now to him because I can't handle it so I was not willing to feel and I felt very you know like oh god get this pain away from me and I realized that I was trying to control and manipulate how I was feeling rather than just allowing it to be rather than allowing to sit with the jealousy I wanted to give it away I wanted to run away from the connection sooner before he runs away from me because then that way I'm somehow saving face which is fucking stupid, but it's true. Um, And that's why I'm doing this video, because I don't think I'm the only one. And you know the term when people say, oh, you know, I don't, you don't want them, but you don't want someone else to have them. Well, I kind of look a little bit deeper on that. And when people say, oh, I don't want them, I just don't want anyone else to have them. I'm like, "Mm, you don't want them but you don't want them to want anyone else instead of you, so you don't really want to let them go. Because nobody wants somebody to be chosen over them. You know, Nobody wants like to feel that they're not being chosen, that they're not being the priority. It's not a nice feeling. It's really uncomfortable. And when I've got no legs to stand on or ground to walk on in the sense of I'm not in a relationship, I just have to allow it to be what it is so I had to sit in this space this morning which I'm calling God's corridor it's like this liminal liminal space in between two places it's like I'm not I wasn't in anything and now I'm not in something but I'm sat in between still getting the emotions as if I'm in something and I've got to deal with that got to deal with how life really is and what's showing up for me and you know when people are like polyamorous and they're you know in these connections and I always think how the fuck do they do that how do they sit with their emotions in that intense jealousy and kind of have that you know that trigger there all the time I'm, it's, I think it's a superpower that these people have but um these feelings of you know jealousy if we don't sit with them and understand them we just try and manipulate and control and push them away we don't integrate them we don't do the alchemy and then the, the work that's needed and it's really unhelpful to push away from the feelings that are actually here today because that's kind of denying reality you know here's my reality I'm jealous and you're like no I'm not see you later exit let them go run off in the other direction just so you don't have to feel the pain so this has really come up for me today and I've expressed it to him as well yesterday I told him that I felt a bit jealous but there's nothing you can do about it and I don't even know if this is the guy that I need to be with or want to be with for the rest of my days, even if that's possible. It doesn't matter. The frame of it doesn't matter. The feelings are still very present because there's a part of me that just wants to be chosen and to be kept and not kept as in like they need to pay for me. I mean, like kept as in like not disregarded or moved on from or given away or been like, no, it's not you, it's me. Or, um, you know, I've met someone else. Like, I have never actually been fully chosen in a relationship. And I think that's because I've never fully chosen myself either. 
Um, so I've been working on that. That's probably why I've been single for so long. Because I've been like working on making sure that I can give the best. That I Because I also wish to receive the best. <laughs> so it's very interesting to go into these feelings of jealousy. And to explore them and not run away from them. And sitting in this little corridor, which is like God's corridor. Um, it's like when you're in a doctor's surgery. And there's like, you've run out of battery on your phone. And there's no magazines that you want to read on the table and you can't talk to anyone because there's no one there. And you're like, you know, like waiting, just waiting patiently. It's horrible to feel. And this is where an addiction would kick in. Right in this moment where I'm feeling jealous, I could definitely smash a biscuit. I could definitely, if I was still smoking weed, reach for a joint. You know, or it would be a, a great day for some MDMA or a pill or a rave of some kind. Or if I was on social media, I'd be scrolling through my jealousy, getting angry at people I don't even know halfway around the world. Or if it was back in the day, I'd have flung out some anger and tried to control and manipulate a situation by kicking out like in some major tantrum just to get attention to make myself feel like I am loved, which is a very unhealthy way of dealing with it. So I'm aware of all of those things. And I guess this is why um, dating apps are doing so well in the fact that they are, <laughs> they're easy ways. They're like McDonald's, aren't they? Fast food where you can just go and grab something because it makes you feel better in the moment. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. It makes you, it's like we're booking it. If I don't feel the pain today of jealousy and work on it, it's like I'm booking it in the diary for like next week and being like oh I don't want to feel it today but I'll feel it then because it's gonna come around and slap me bitch slap me hard with the next guy or the next person so it's not necessarily about the man it's just about the feeling and I can't attach this to the man and be like I blame you because you fancy someone that's on the other side of the world I can't do that because it's pointless I've just got to go oh this is awkward <laughs> and sit with it so I'm sharing this because I find it funny in a way, but also weird. And I do have a brand called The Talkwoods, which is awkward talks about things that matter. And um, this is one of those awkward talks about things that matter. So it mattered to me anyway. So if you like this video, you can hit like and subscribe if you want, if you want to see more of my ramblings and my other weird videos. And just to let you know, if you do write anything in the comments, cool, thank you. I don't read them. <laughs> Because I get addicted to the highs of somebody loving me and then the lows of somebody hating me and the highs of someone loving me and the lows again. It's literally the reason I don't have social media. It's an addictive culture to read through all the comments and to literally go through and, you know, tease myself on kitty crack comments that can make me feel good, bad, good, bad, high, low, high, low. I don't do that. Um, so I'm no longer reading comments. So I did a video with Pam Gregory the other day. 44,000 people watched that video. And uh, all I could do was focus on the people underneath that were like, you talk too much, which played into some childhood trauma that I had, which made me feel even more uncomfortable. So I am not reading comments. Um, and I'll do another video probably at some point about the awkwardness <laughs> about childhood traumas. But for now, um, thank you for watching. And if you feel the same, join me in, the lim in this liminal space. Come and sit in the in the corridor, in God's corridor, and just feel, because we've got to feel in order to heal, and there is no point in denying reality, and pretending it's not true, and choosing something else to make us feel better, that won't. And on that note, bye.